Welcome everyone to tonight's presentation brought to you by the Faber Climate Action Team. We are a group of nonpartisan volunteers concerned about climate change and um, bringing you speakers on the last Tuesday of every month to talk about various subjects related to climate change. And if you've missed any of our past discussions that we've had, you can go to our website, FalbrookClimateActionTeam.org, and you can see a link there for our past Zoom presentations that we've had over the past couple of years since we've been with the pandemic. So uh, great resource, check all those out. We've had some really good speakers. And our next meeting is going to be September 27th, and it's going to be on managing water in the West. So very important topic, as we all know, living here for all of us. Tonight, we are really excited to have Oliver Edelson. He is the legislative age for climate policy for Congressman Mike Levin, who's of the 49th district. Now, in Fallbrook here, we're in the 50th, 49th is just next door to us. So um, very critical piece of information. He's going to be discussing the new Inflation Reduction Act that was just passed and breaking it down for us and explaining um, uh, the climate pieces of it and what it's going to bring to the table. So super timely, Oliver, we're super glad to have you here. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Well, thanks, Terry, and thanks everyone for for uh, for joining tonight. Uh, and really excited to get to talk to you all a little bit about the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, my sort of approach here is uh, I, I'm going to focus. There's a lot in the bill, um, but you know, given my focus on our team as well as uh, this group's focus, I'm going to focus solely on the climate and energy pieces, recognizing that there are also critical healthcare provisions uh, and uh, changes in the tax code uh, uh, outside of, outside of uh, climate that I'm not gonna touch on as much, but if you all have any questions, I'm happy to uh, you know, touch on those as well. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll focus on, 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 on what both of us are, 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 are you know, focused on here. And I thought just as a, uh, as a helpful, uh, you know, stage setting, I'm going to share my screen really quickly and and show you just the a reworked version of the table of contents of the bill. So we have a sense of what is what is in it. It's a 730 page bill. About uh, it, it shifted as 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 Senator Cinema had some uh, changes to it, um, including some actually very beneficial ones around drought, which is the topic of next week's or, or your, your meeting next month, I should say. Uh, so, uh, you know, we can get into that as well. But let me just share my screen really quickly. And you all will need to confirm that you can actually see it once I hit that button. Um, but you should see that there. So it looks pretty simple. This bill, the table of contents is one page. And this goes by the Senate committees. And we'll go really quickly. This is not, necess not necessary to, to internalize all of this, but it's helpful in terms of getting a sense of um, just the broad topics. And so, can you all see my pointer here? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And so the topics that we'll be discussing today uh, are this energy security uh, subtitle, which is where all the tax policy changes um, are, are included. Uh, we will talk a little bit about the agriculture, nutrition, and forestry just very, very, very quickly, uh, and then go into some of the energy and natural resources committee jurisdiction. Uh, there's a lot of great rebate programs, and I'll show you an awesome tool where you, you know you can visualize for your own household what this could what this bill could potentially mean in terms of rebates for uh, you know electric vehicle tax credits uh, for installing you know electrifying your house or or, or elements like that. And we can go in, and what's really cool about that tool is you can plug in your you know your your all your household information and figure out what you qualify for because various programs have different qualifications based on income uh, and tax status and things like that. Uh, and then we'll also uh, talk about the environment and public works uh, committee section a bit as well. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go back to stop, stop the share. Um, and, you know, uh, just to sort of frame our, our my discussion today, 
you know, I think that we all we all know the stakes here. Um, but I'll 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 talk I'll talk through those. You know, right now I know in California we are uh, uh, about to face or are facing uh, you know pretty terrible heat wave. Obviously, uh, we have a wildfire crisis that's connected to that. Uh, you know, continued drought uh, conditions. Uh, all of those uh, are reasons why we need to take action now. And uh, you know, since coming to Congress, Congressman Levin has been. Uh, really focused on, and since before coming to Congress, he was a clean energy attorney before that, uh, has been really focused on on addressing this. And, you know, just this this bill includes uh, the top line number for climate is uh, $369 billion with a B um, for across climate, clean energy, uh, clean transportation, and environmental justice uh, investments. And uh, according to uh, research from Princeton that will reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by uh, around 40% by 2030. Obviously, there is variability in, in, in you know, the adop adoption levels uh, uh, and, and what we'll see, but that's, those, those are the best estimates uh, with, with uh, you know, additional executive action and private sector action. Our goal is to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions to 50% below, you know, below 50% below our 2005 levels. Sometimes uh, people will use different ones. Um, and at the same time, it's going to lower our energy costs. And, uh, you know, it, it includes incentives uh, for consumers to buy energy efficient and, uh, and electric appliances. It has uh, clean vehicle credits that we can uh, talk about. It also includes 30% tax credit for rooftop solar, um, which is, uh, a really strong uh, push uh, to continue in a way that in an area that California has led in. Um, it notably in the tax credit area, um, I'll boil it down to sort of, let's say, let's say four areas in the, in that subtitle D that we talked about. It extends for 10 years for a decade, which is the length of this bill, uh, the investment tax credits and production tax credits for, um, clean energy product projects. So it moves, it shifts towards a technology neutral. So it's focused only on emissions reductions um, after two years, so it's a transition period, um, but for a wind project, a solar project on a utility scale, um, uh, uh, you know, a geothermal project, uh, it allows for a 30% tax credit um, and includes uh, standards for uh, domestic content requirements of, of uh, uh, project components, as well as apprenticeship requirements, to ensure that we are building the next generation of, uh, you know, people who are who are employed in this sector, because that's one of the potential main constraints is is uh, you know employment. Uh, in addition to that, that clean energy, there's a clean fuel credit, um, and this is focused uh, in you know electrifying uh, or, or, or you know reducing the emissions of of certain really hard to, you know, high emitting sectors. Uh, one area of focus for the Congressman is sustainable aviation fuels. Uh, since electrifying uh, aviation, while that's a, a focus and something that, that we're working on is just decades away. And, and in the meantime, we really need to uh, be working on reducing the emissions of that. Uh, in addition, it includes strong tax credits for energy efficiency. We know that um, electrifying our homes, improving home efficiency um, and uh, it, it, and improving uh, commercial and industrial efficiency uh, of our buildings and, and factories and manufacturing sectors is all is so critical and one of the easiest ways and also one of the highest employers in the clean energy space. And then finally, I think one thing that's really exciting is it establishes and expands manufacturing tax credits for those who are manufacturing, uh, you know, components of uh, batteries and of and of all these products, so that uh, we're really onshoring, as we've seen over the last, uh, you know, six, I guess, you know, six months or so since you know Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but also just, uh, you know, over the past few decades, we have been reliant on petro dictators across the globe uh, for our whole energy sector uh, and and beyond that, and you know, including, uh, you know, our, our agricultural sector as well. And this bill will really not only increase the deployment of clean energy, but also make sure that we have a strong domestic uh, manufacturing sector, as well as provide incentives for our, you know, for it to not come from uh, adversarial nations like, uh, you know, Russia and China uh, as well. So that's sort of the the title 
one area. Um, and I have I've already deviated far from my notes. Uh, so we'll try to uh, 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 get back to those. Uh, but I talked a little bit about those manufacturing credits. That's $30 billion in and of itself. Um, and then in addition, uh, there are um, in the in the Title V and Title VI, there are also, you know, they're not just tax credits for those investing, but they're also incentives. So there's $10 billion uh, for, for new clean manufacturing facilities to get grants, um, as well as, uh, you know, loans and grants for, uh, you know, uh, new clean uh, vehicle manufacturing facilities, as well as for uh, our national labs to invest in breakthrough energy research. Uh, and then on the uh, you know, environment uh, side, it includes uh, three billion for port electrification, which is, uh, I, guess, I guess, you know, Fallbrook is a little more inland, um, but especially uh, for our whole region when we're looking at, at air quality standards and smog alerts. Uh, you know, with you know ports of LA, Long Beach, and and also you know the smaller port at San Diego. Uh, you know, uh, we we for a long time have dealt with air quality issues due to the huge levels of, of pollution, not only at the ports, but in surrounding you know, transportation sectors as, uh, as you know, heavy duty vehicles are, are moving freight across, across the region. And so we're really excited about, uh, about those provisions in addition to complementary provisions for air quality monitoring uh, as, as well. It also includes uh, about $5 billion for coastal restoration efforts, about 5 billion for wildfire prevention, uh, it also increases one, you know, and then it, and then it also increases uh, the fees and royalties that uh, oil and gas companies pay uh, on our on our public lands and waters. Uh, I know there's been a lot of focus, and certainly, uh, you know, as part of any negotiation, you get parts that that you know we in an ideal world wouldn't have 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 wanted in, in terms of uh, some of the oil and gas lease sale mandates. Um, but one consolation prize in that space is that uh, it ends non-competitive leasing and it increases the rates that uh, oil and gas companies have to pay to, to use our public lands. And that's actually, that, that language came from uh, Congressman Levin's uh, uh, bill to hold, hold those polluters accountable for, for, for using our, our public lands. And so, you know, I think that when we're looking at this, at this, at this bill on the, on the whole, and I know I've breeze through and it's hard to it's hard to break down chunk by chunk and I'd be happy to sort of go into uh, you know more details um, but you know I think we see it in 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 four elements that I'm hopefully don't don't butcher here um, but that is in clean energy in clean manufacturing in clean vehicles and in environmental justice. There are $60 billion of focused investments throughout the bill to ensure that um, the benefits of this bill uh, go to all communities, and in particular, environmental justice communities that have for too long uh, have been uh, either, either left out of the benefits of you know, the clean vehicle shift, or worse, uh, you know, the, the areas of highest pollution and of poorest air quality. So it ensures that we are are righting our historic wrongs and also being inclusive in our in our future Guys. development as part of this bill. Uh, so uh, I think with with that uh, with that sort of quick hey. oversight, I I'd love to just quickly show you that tool that I that I uh, that I talked about. Uh, and I might need your participation here to make up a uh, uh, make up. Oh, I just saw a question. Let me answer that really quick. Um, Cynthia, you asked about the subsidies for rooftop solar. That's a great question. Um, this is a. I know there have been state subsidies as well. This ex it extends for a decade yeah. at at thirty percent. Uh, I, I, I don't want to speak out of line, but I am, I, I believe there historically, it's been a 10% tax credit, um, that expired at the end of 2021 and hadn't been renewed. And now this extends it for 10 years. Uh, but I need to, that's my understanding. 
I am not 100% sure, but I can, I can double check all those facts and get back to you. Does that answer your question, Cynthia? All right, great. And you can you all see this now? Yes, we can see it. Great. So this is a really exciting tool. A because I it helps you know, <coughs> uh, you know it 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 helps me visualize. I've read the bill. It's still hard for me to always wrap my head around. And and when I talk to people, really illustrate what the what the opportunities are on the residential scale. This doesn't really cover the commercial scale or utility scale uh, clean energy development, but it allows us to see um, the full suite of of options for at least household electrification incentives, which is a, a large area of investment in the bill. So you can see here, and I will drop the link in the chat so you all can do this on on your own time. Um, so I'll go through it pretty quickly, but you can see this is the whole, uh, you know, all of the potential benefits for those who uh, might be interested in electrifying their, their homes or investing in electric vehicles or, or what have you. And you can, uh, you know, if you, you know, we talk about rooftop solar, um, you know, here's a little bit of more of a description of, of what it is and some notes and also when you can get it. And so, uh, you know, we let's we can make up, and you'll see as we go through this that a lot of these are more focused on low-income communities uh, or their their income cutoffs, and so it's helpful for you on your own time to sort of put in your own income um, and 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 then calculate sort of what might be what might fit you uh, uh, as well. So you know, let's see what's what's Fallbrook zip code nine two zero two eight. Zero two eight. Let's say our homeowner status. Let's say we own our home. Uh, I'll say our income is, you know, let's say it's a hundred thousand. If that if that works with people, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm a head of household, uh, and my household size is, let's say it's three, uh, and so then we'll calculate, and you'll notice that some of these up. Oh, I was too. I was too conservative in my let's let's say our household income is two hundred, not twenty dollars. Let's say it's two hundred thousand dollars. So you see here that it quickly, uh, you know, it, it rejects some of the tax credits based on, uh, you know, the income level. So you'll see that these are you know focused more on, on low income. So you know you couldn't get an electric stove tax credit, but at hundred thousand dollars you could. Um, and here you can see. What this would save you, um, assuming that you, you know, take use of these tax credits. So you'll see that your estimated bill savings per year will be over thirteen hundred dollars, uh, which is a pretty, uh, which is a pretty sizable uh, uh, savings uh, o o over time, and and it helps you visualize to the payback period for for these investments. Um, so with that, let me uh, stop the sharing. I will sh drop that in the chat. Um, and we can we can jump into questions uh, if that if that works. And I'm seeing some in the chat. Uh, great. Yes. Okay. Joy. Let me let me expand this so I can see multiple at once. Um, okay. Let me take them. Okay, Don, you asked about uh, deep geothermal uh, as base load. Yeah, you know, I think that certainly geothermal is part of the uh, part of the conversation, and uh, you know, within within the bill, it you know, it it, it is included as one of the uh, you know areas that will get a thirty percent tax credit. Uh, you know, I. I think I would say broad, you know, I'm not as I'm not as much of an expert. I know we've we've corresponded in the past on on deep geothermal. Uh, so we can chat about this offline. You know, I'm I'm not as sort of an expert on 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 that technology in particular, but I, you know, think as I alluded to before, uh, certainly I, you know, electrification uh, and reducing our emissions and reducing our need for fossil fuels, I think does prevent uh, unnecessary uh, war and conflict. We see a lot of 
uh, conflicts across the globe that are predicated on, uh, you know, uh, resource uh, scarcity. And uh, right up there is, uh, is, is, is fossil fuels. Uh, uh, so I think that that certainly is, is, is important. And then uh, moving on, Don, does that answer your question? Is there anything else you wanted to add on that? Okay, great. Um, and then uh, on solar subsidies, yes. So we had been operating on the broad scale with the investment and production tax credits for clean energy. We, a number of these have been in existence in the past. However, uh, we typically run them year after year. And then when the government can't get its act together and pass a funding bill, they expire for a bit. Then we pass them and they're retroactive. Um, and what this bill does is it makes some modifications. So the, the top one is it expands eligibility to standalone energy storage, uh, which is something that is uh, a really welcome shift and one that the congressman pushed for. Um, because as of you know before this bill, energy storage projects um, were not eligible uh, for the investment or production tax credit, uh, uh, except if they were built alongside solar. Uh, I know that especially in, in San Diego County, as well as in Orange County, uh, which the Congressman represents, we've seen a number of standalone storage projects. So this bill now sends that strong market signal um, that, that standalone storage uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's key to uh, you know, helping reduce our need for fossil fuels. And I was uh, just on the Cal ISO web uh, app, which I love to check, and uh, saw that uh, as of right before when I joined, um, that that as these batteries are discharging onto the grid right now, they are actually producing more energy than Diablo Canyon is uh, for, for our grid. So there's certainly a, a, a huge potential here for, for energy storage uh, as well. Um, and then on... Going back to the you know subsidies, so what it does is extend it for ten years, and the reason why that's so uh, so critical is because it gives market certainty to, especially utility scale renewable energy developers who uh, have been in domestic large scale uh, renewable energy projects because they didn't know if there would be that thirty percent tax credit, uh, and so right now this sends that really strong market signal that these tax credits are here, they're here to stay, and especially for emerging technologies, that, that, they, that, that, that private industry will be more willing to invest uh, if there's a technology or a, an improved efficiency. We are meeting today, just, just today with a, 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 you know, a, a researcher at the University of, of California at, at San Diego, who's interested in uh, you know, improved efficiency solar panels, and is saying that this bill with that timeline is allowing private industry, it's giving them more confidence to be able to invest in that, knowing that while this concept, this improved solar panel is not yet ready for market, they know that within the decade it will be. So they are willing to put their private money into additional R&D so that it can be deployed. Uh, so I think that's what's really, uh, really exciting. Uh, as you can see, I, I can get, uh, get, get excited. So uh, apologies for, for, for going on a bit about that one. Um, and just to Joy, did that answer answer your? I want to make sure I don't breeze through and not actually answer people's questions. Or if you have any follow up, um, so my question was whether the subsidies, for instance, for new electric appliances, start this year or next year. For new electric appliances, uh, uh, those will be. Uh, next year. Uh, so the way that the rebates work for the home electrification provisions, those $9 billion, is, uh, is the bill directs state energy offices, in our case, uh, the California Energy Commission, to develop a program. Uh, uh, and so they need to develop that program, get it approved by the Federal Department of Energy. Uh, and then uh, from there, uh, from there, the program will be implemented in 2023. Uh, so it, it hasn't gone into effect yet. And that's one 
one cool thing about that tool and, and is is uh, it, it shows sort of when these programs are, are, are going to affect. So, you know, hopefully you don't go buy one and then expect it, uh, you know, you know, go buy your electric stovetop and then expect the, the rebate right away uh, because, you know, there's a little bit of a lag we time in implementation. So it's too late. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. So I have one too. So, uh, so, but you know, it's, it, it's, it's okay. We're, we're, on, we're on the right side here. All right. Okay. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm going, I'm trying to make sure I'm going through one by one. I believe Lou had the next question also on electric stove. Um, and I believe, so the, for these rebates, uh, I believe it's $840 for uh, an electric stove. I could be wrong. Um, in here, uh, I will, I will check before we. It's a, that's what it says on the website. It says upfront discount of eight eight hundred forty dollars, and then I guess you can get up to fifty percent off depending on your yeah. your uh, tax bracket. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's certain scaling out um, at at the top ends, I believe. Um, but yes, that's that's our that's our understanding. And then you know, I would just encourage you to make sure to use this this tool, uh, and because it will help you. For example, you know, I I I I don't I haven't memorized all of the uh, uh, income level uh, cutouts, but these programs uh, are not for uh, you know all. all all individuals, there is a um, income level cutout. So I would just uh, encourage you to 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 make sure that you're you're aware of that and, and you know understand what might be available to your household before um, you know moving forward with any uh, you know any any improvements. Great. Um, Okay, I answered Don, Lou. All right, John, and I see if you have uh, two questions here, uh, and and I'll try to I'll try to jump uh, run through these uh, energy storage. I believe I answered that one uh, in terms of it's included as part of the investment tax credit uh, 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 provision. I you know because. Energy storage is not really a, a traditional renewable. I, you know, you can't really claim it for the production credit. Um, uh, so it's 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 focused on the investment. But um, you know, I know that the energy storage sector is, is really excited about about that. Uh, I believe your, I believe pumped hydro would qualify, um, but let me. Let me review my my notes here really quickly uh, before I definitively uh, say one way or the other. Um, oh, it should it should qual. There is uh, exist existing under the ITC. Uh, I believe that there are certain hydropower technologies uh, that 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 do qualify, and the bill that extends it doesn't amend any provisions in terms of the hydropower technology. So I'll need to go back and look at um, you know the existing uh, hydropower uh, uh, qualifications to to sort of confirm. But my my sense is yes, and then as we transition to the uh, technology neutral. Uh, my my assumption would be that it it would as well. Um, and then, all right, I'm gonna uh, John. I'm gonna answer your questions all in one fell swoop if that if that works. And I'll get back to Bruce. Um, and and feel free to jump in too, folks. If if you want to, you know, ask your question uh, live, or if there's any additional flavor you, you want, you can feel free to just jump right in or or, or raise your hand to. Um, if that, you know, if you, if you'd like, happy, happy to do it that way too. Um, 
Uh, yes, I can follow up with you on uh, on these solar panel contact. Uh, a, uh, I'll, I'll I'll follow up with you uh, as well as a uh, you know it was a private conversation, so I feel comfortable sharing you know who who it was. But since we're recording, I'll 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 make sure uh, not to. Share who share their name right now without uh, conferring with that they're willing to to be bombarded by wonderful climate activists reaching out to to them. So uh, if that's all right, John, I will I will message you directly uh, uh, in a second. Um, yes, okay. Don asked about carbon capture technology. This is a provision that that is included um, in the bill. This is one that as part of. Uh, you know, the conversations with uh, Senator Manchin uh, that he insisted on, uh, on, on certain carbon capture uh, provisions. Uh, so, uh, you know, it extends the existing uh, Section 45Q uh, carbon capture utilization and, and storage um, uh, tax credit and uh, and increases that 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 tax credit um, for carbon oxide capture to eighty five dollars a ton for sequestration and sixty dollars a ton for for use including enhanced oil recovery, um, and and also establishes uh, a a new credit for direct air capture that's one hundred and eighty dollars uh, per per ton. I would say that this is. Uh, you know, an area that has uh, fractured uh, uh, certainly the uh, environmental community to a, a degree and, and one that, you know, I don't think we would have uh, uh, prioritized. Uh, there has been some investment in direct air capture technologies, uh, but that's what's in, uh, in, 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 the bill, uh, in the bill as well. And then Don, okay, G great on that. And John, thanks for sharing your email. I'll shoot you a, a, an email from my, and let me make sure before I, before I forget um, to just give you all my email so that uh, as, as things come up or if you have any questions, you can uh, follow up with me directly. Any, any questions or uh, that people would like to ask uh, uh, live uh, here or, or talk through any additional sections of the bill that you might have read about in the news that that you know we can we can chat about here. So uh, I'll ask a couple questions. One is about um, right now we see there's a lot of need for climate mitigation for the disasters that are happening now that we haven't, you know, just today I read that the melting of the Greenland ice field is, it's baked in now. It's happening a lot faster than was predicted. And so 10 inches of sea level rise is baked in. There's nothing that can be done to stop it. So I think we're you know, we see the flooding in Pakistan and also in our own country. Um, it, are, are, are there funds in the bill for the disaster mitigation that's needed? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question, Joy. And, you know, I think that as a, you know, as an environmentalist myself, it's, it, you know, the loss of the ice caps and the melting of permafrost in uh, Arctic and subarctic areas is, uh, you know, just beyond distressing for for our planet and also for uh, indigenous communities' way of life, especially up in in Alaska. You you're seeing you know displaced communities, uh, and not not because they're the ones uh, increasing their their emissions. It's uh, really lays bare the importance of the fact that this is a a, a, a whole global system. Uh, a, a, a few areas that that I think of the bill that are really important for climate mitigation uh, or all, you know, as we're looking at the landscape scale, uh, 
Uh, I mentioned some of the funding for uh, NOAA for coastal resilience. I believe it's on the scale of about three to five billion dollars there. Uh, certainly in 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 Congressman Levin's district, that's a top priority. Um, you know, we have uh, you know bluffs that are that are eroding into the ocean that you know. Uh, you know, carry the low, you know, the tracks of the Los Angeles corridor, um, which is the second, you know, busiest rail corridor in in the country. And so, you know, if you ever need a better example of of the, you know, economic costs of climate change, let alone the 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 moral imperative to to handle it, I think that's, um, uh, you know, that's that's critical. Um, and then I would also add that there is about twenty billion dollars um, for um, for agriculture, that was that was one section of the bill. I, I realized I didn't I didn't touch on is the agriculture, nutrition, and forestry section, um, and this is another place where our uh, you know our agricultural sector can play a huge role in uh, in sequest not only sequestering carbon but increasing the resilience of our of our of our of our land. Uh, you know, if for for increasing payments to cover crops helps reduce the uh, water runoff and, and water loss and nutrient loss across, you know, the on the landscape scale. And as we look at, you know, the impacts of the Colorado River Basin, um, you know, that's that's sort of one of the, uh, you know, uh, big challenges is agriculture in, in, in Colorado leading to, uh, you know, inefficient water use. And, and, and you know, we see it at sort of the other end, uh, the the downside there. And so there's, you know, really strong incentives there. Uh, and then the two other elements that I'd point out, and I am sure I am forgetting, uh, uh, you know, other, other, you know, relevant things, but the other two is, uh, is, is uh, forest management. Uh, it gives about $5 billion for both the U.S. Forest Service and the Department of the Interior to um, manage the resilience of our forests, um, which, you know, on the, on, you know, as sort of similarly to what we talked about in terms of, uh, the agriculture scale, um, you know, it will, will improve, uh, you know, and help mitigate the impacts of climate change. And then also for f $4 billion for, for drought, uh, and hopefully your speaker, uh, uh, next month can, can add a lot of additional flavor, um, there, but, you know, when we look at the status of the Colorado River and of Lake Mead and Lake Powell, it is clear that uh, we are not, uh, you know, climate change is not a future thing. It's impacting us. It's impacting us now. Um, and the best investments, the most cost-effective investments are in uh, improving and ensuring the proper functioning of natural systems. Uh, those are going to be the most cost-effective uh, and then, of course, you know, for you know, we'll we'll need to take also you know technological investments as well. But to to make those, uh, you know, to make our landscape more resilient is 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 of critical importance. Uh, and so those are some of the some of the provisions um, that that you know we you know we we fought to include. And and as I said, I'm I'm sure I am unfortunately forgetting some. And Gabrielle, I see you have your hand raised too. Oh, if you yes. want to jump in. Yeah, I actually have a, a message on the chat. I'll, excuse me, a question on the chat mechanism also. But um, this one question is, uh, you know, our, our Greenland has really, like um, I think Joy mentioned, has really been a um, primary impact. Just recently, the research is really outstanding. And I wondered if in the bill, another set of research that dovetails with the sea level rise, especially on our coast from New York down to uh, Florida is the um, uh, phenomena of land sinking. Uh, so when sea level rises, as you know, um, along the coast, the land itself, way inland, it, even up to two or three miles starts to sink. Is there anything in the bill that will address anything that has to do with that? That is a... That's a that's a really good good question, um, and you know uh, I I would add you know I th I think as we look at the and I I just looked up the numbers and I totally butchered uh, our coastal resilience funding I by a magnitude of ten 
I oh, thought thanks. it was four. I thought it was four point two billion. It is forty two billion. Oh, um, oh, so, okay, good. So, you butchered it, and and it's really better. Yeah, exactly. I know. You okay. usually, I, I, I am overly optimistic, uh, but, uh, you know, I think that that funding could be uh, really helpful, uh, and you know, it it aligns well with the congressman's work on uh, his Resilient Coast and Estuaries Act, which would support funding for, uh, you know, protecting and restoring the proper ecosystem. The, the other uh, infrastructure that's affected by that, it has to do with uh, plumbing and sewers and bridges and, um, you know, uh, roadways as well. Uh, so that's, I'm glad to see that here that it sounds like you're saying there is something in there. Yeah, would, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, if you, if you look at the bill, it doesn't, because of the Senate rules, uh, uh, it is uh, to, 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 to conform with the bird rule, the bill cannot directly legislate. It cannot create new programs yes. broadly. It right. is must be focused on on appropriation. So you'll you'll see that some of these you know huge numbers the 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 bill text is actually pretty lean relatively. Either it's extending existing programs, it's expanding, or it's making small tweaks that conform and comply yeah. with that. So I think that you know it doesn't sure. spell out um, you know. Uh, you know exactly what type of coastal restoration projects um, mm -hmm. might be eligible, but my assumption is that that given NOAA's experience, not only you know on direct coast, but also you know, uh, and I, if I I'm I'm spacing on the technical ice. I think it's like sub subsume uh, 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 land, uh, uh, but I think that it, it it could potentially qualify. And then you know all I would add is in addition to that. Uh, you know, 42 billion is there's an additional 340 million for, um, you know, research, um, observation and, and data modeling for, uh, for NOAA for uh, both oceans and for just broad climate research. And so as we, you know, un work to understand uh, the phenomenon that, that you were talking about, and that Joy was also talking, you know, you know, the, the events in, in Greenland, you know, it, it helps. It will help us gain additional information uh, on, on exactly the implications of that, of of potential mitigation efforts that we can take. Uh, it will just expand our scientific understanding. And you know, while we have a great, I would say, understanding of 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 of, of you know broad climate models, I think often when we get down to the more micro level, especially when it comes to um, our coasts and our oceans, where you know, unfortunately, we can't. Uh, continually monitor like we can on, on know, the land, yeah. uh, I think that will have a huge, huge impact because, you know, unfortunately, well, Oliver, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oliver, what is your opinion about, you know, that was one of the things that really shocked me about, um, the, aside from the legislator, and I'm trying not to take a tangent here, but uh, the, uh, even, uh, the, the in incapacity or unwillingness for whatever good reasons they think in Washington that they can't create programs. It's similar to like the problems with substations, electrical substations and that sort of thing. What do you think in your opinion would, would bring about some kind of uh, central uh, component in Washington to put together the programs that are needed to uh, facilitate those kinds of um, remedies, like for the coast and yeah, land sinking. Well, Is there anything that you think of that would motivate Washington to start putting that together? Or are they? Are they trying to make a centralized program for climate change in this way to remedy the problems? Yeah, you know, I think that uh there there isn't sort of this overarching climate uh no, no, there isn't yeah. climate uh eight you know agency federally um however in in the house uh and in the legislative branch uh the congressman does sit on the select committee on the climate crisis um which is a body that was stood up in in 2019 um to be the at least the house's uh uh you know, clearing house of climate action. They right. put together a climate action plan. It's that like a consortium, about. yeah. 
Exactly, about 700 recommendations. And with the passage of the uh, Inf Inflation Reduction Act, I think we were at about 300 that have been enacted into, into law. And that, that really provided the roadmap for this Inflation Reduction Act bill. Um, okay. On the executive branch side, I think that there are some certain agency sort of um, executive offices that, that do provide that, that to some degree. There's the Council on Environmental Quality, um, which is an office within the executive office of the president. Uh, there's also, also the Office of Science and Technology Policy, which is more focused on the research and development side. But there isn't sort of that, that, that one-stop shop that you were saying. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that that should should be given consideration as we figure out, you know, maybe as 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 a step before that, you know, to ensure that that various agencies are are figuring out how their work fits into the broader puzzle of climate mitigation and 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 and, you know, uh, reducing our, our our overall emissions and meeting our, our Paris climate goals. Uh, so I think I think that that that's a that's a that's a very strong point and something that you know we should be paying attention to. Thank you. And uh, when you see me looking down, I'm just trying to avoid a migraine. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Oliver, it has to do with uh, I've been on the computer too long, so I'm not focusing on the screen directly. <laughs> just wanted to say that, but thank you I, for I, the reply. Thank of you. course, I know I, I I understand that. And if you know you want to, you know, turn off your camera too. Um, I, okay. I won't I won't I, I won't take that that uh, personally. <laughs> uh, if if that would make you if that would you know help. I've I've been in your shoes with with okay. with with migraines before. Um, all right, great. I'm gonna try to go back to the questions that have been in the chat. Um, all right, and I see Gabrielle, you had another one on uh yeah and i thought maybe that's already been answered because i entered the um meeting late yeah so and you know, if it I, has, just don't do it I, I i'm not aware of any sort of direct capture uh uh credits uh you know i, I think there's a, a world in which they could potentially be part of the section 48 um I, itc uh, the investment tax credits or the production tax credits, um, or, or, or I should say the 45Q um, yeah, the other carbon capture. If the other participants are wondering what that's about, I asked the question of, um, is there any particular technology incentives for uh, private individual residences to capture carbon releases or other emissions from, say, you know, furnaces and HVACs and a bunch of other things that we have in our homes now? Yeah, and, and I think that as as we get, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, those home rebate programs are are going to be designed by the California Energy Commission. That's okay. how the, the bill is designed. Okay. And so okay. I think this is an area where as the devil will be in the details as they design the program and, and figure out exactly what technologies qualify uh, okay. under the bill. I think, you know, we'll, we'll see a sort of does a... Uh, you know, a, a direct air capture for for furnace or HVAC qualify under uh, under that uh, and allow a rebate uh, or or a credit. I think that's going to be something that 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 we'll see. It's certainly, I think, at least as in the last month, folks have really been focusing on the electrification and replacement of 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 appliances. So you know, with with heat pumps, um, with yeah. electric furnaces, and and with you know. Uh, you know, electric washer dryers and electric stoves has, has gotten more of the, the attention. Um, great. Okay, thank you very much. Of course, of course. Uh, and then Lou also asked um, carbon emissions from uh, manufacture of cement used to produce concrete um, related to this. Okay, these are all, uh, let, me, let me read it out for folks who aren't who aren't uh, looking at, at the comments, Lou asked, anything in the bill regarding reduction of carbon emission from manufacture of, of cement used to produce concrete related to this with the demise of fossil fuels, how will petrochemical industry be, be affected since, uh, you know, plus, you know, since, uh, uh, since, you know, oil is, is, is the precursor to plastics production uh, and leading to will asphalt continue to be used or are there plans for replacement in this bill? Um, those are 
really great, really great questions. I think that uh, some of the ones that are uh, leading forward in terms of sort of re replacements, um, I don't think the bill sort of contemplates at least uh, explicitly uh, here uh, uh, since the, you know, since the bill is more focused on tax credits and, and policy, but I think we'll certainly see that that shift uh, in terms of sort of the clean manufacturing, uh, it, the bill includes forty million dollars, forty excuse me, forty billion dollars in tax credits um, for those clean te technology manufacturing, and, and that includes, um, uh, you know, for uh, the reduction of emissions at manufacturing facilities for uh, for cement, for concrete. Uh, uh, as well, so there is that. What well, that is sort of one of the key elements of those uh, tax credits, as well as the grant programs um, under the bill uh, for, uh, you know, for emissions reduction technology at these at these facilities. Um, and that's sort of the first time uh, that that we're seeing uh, this, you know, the this this emissions reductions upgrade. Uh, uh, grant program that we're seeing. And so that's a, I believe it's a $6 billion program that we're seeing where, uh, you know, uh, industrial, uh, you know, industrial sector, uh, you know, manufacturing facilities for steel, aluminum, other, other sort of high pollutant um, uh, industrial facilities uh, will be able to receive payments for their emissions reductions uh, strategies, and and that you know, I've seen one estimate that said that that alone, that those clean manufacturing uh, incentives will will cut nearly seventy million metric tons of annual climate pollution, which is you know the equivalent of uh, as I as I refer to my notes, the equivalent of running over eighteen thousand wind turbines for a full year. Um, and so as we sort of look at the emissions reductions provisions in the bill, it's important to sort of figure, you know, and remember how those, uh, how the, how those fit in. And, you know, I think, I think I said that to the, you know, in addition to those grants, there's also the tax credits for, um, for clean technology, uh, manufacturing. And, and that's, you know, I think less focused on, uh, on these large industrials and more on components for, uh, clean energy, uh, you know, when we're looking at brackets and modules and 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 elements for uh, wind, solar, geothermal, et cetera, uh, as well as for energy efficiency uh, projects. Uh, and then, you know, the last thing that uh, you know, I, I would I would add is uh, it includes five billion dollars for the federal government to use its purchasing power. Uh, uh, especially through the Department of Transportation, through the General Services Administration, to buy low carbon materials, including, uh, you know, concrete, steel, uh, asphalt for roads, uh, to for in the construction of, of you know public buildings, uh, of, of highways, uh, and, and just any other federal spaces. So it will also help, uh, you know, private industry as I was sort of saying earlier with the 10 year extension, this will send the strong market signal that it is within you know, industry's best interest to really aggressively pursue uh, decarbonization of these really hard to decarbonize uh, uh, sectors. Oh, bye John, thanks for, thanks for joining. I'll, I'll shoot you a note. <laughs> Oliver, I have a quick question. This might be too detailed, um, but it says, I'm looking at the website and it says basic weatherization, you get a tax credit and it describes it as including insulation, air sealing and ventilation. Do you know, would that include like a attic fan to take out the heat of the attic? That is a great Pardon? question. Okay. Um, and again, uh, it might be so specific. I don't, I don't know how much detail yeah, is in there. Um, I, I would ass assume that it likely would qualify. However, 
uh, I think we will need to wait here for the exact yes. design of the program by the California Energy Commission. Mm -hmm. I am happy to, uh, you know, just uh, double check that, um, you know, that through in the bill, uh, but I imagine that that it, it doesn't get that specific in those mm -hmm. in those sections because I think anything else that is uh, you know that it specifically discusses uh, are the other elements listed in that in that web page such as you know windows and doors and 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 what have you but I think as we get into you know the type of insulation the type of and you know energy efficiency projects right. it, it probably doesn't get into that but let me um let me uh let me go through that uh and confirm for you okay thank you yeah it's just going through our wish list and <laughs> hey i don't blame you making plans and seeing what's available <laughs> as we all as as we should yeah um <laughs> oliver um you may have already addressed this so um are, are there any provisions for uh higher education in the bill for either research and development for say um, continued research in climate change, atmospheric science, uh, and also in other ways, is there anything for credits to the universities or colleges or even schools uh, for uh, implementation of certain types of carbon reducing technology? Yes, my, my short answer to that to that question yes, yes, yes. is 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 yes unfortunately you know i think it's it's the eligibility is spread well throughout the bill that it, you know i don't have a a dollar okay. figure but okay. i know that across the board you know for for example um you know as we look at uh you know for 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 example the environmental climate justice block grant program mm -hmm. um which is for you know, community-led projects that, that one of the eligible entities um, is institutions of higher education to partner with local communities on pollution mm -hmm. monitoring, prevention, environmental remediation. Um, mm -hmm. And then you know, as we also look at the uh, you know, research and development funding that you know, I talked about for, for, uh, for NOAA and you know, that, that you know, there are similar uh, pots of money for, for research um, you know, uh, uh, across the bill. That that you know our our federal agencies have a longstanding um, you know partnership and authorization to partner with uh, with you know with institutions of higher education uh, on on research on development uh, and 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 on implementation uh, as well. And then you know I'd say, I'd also just sort of maybe piggyback on that and say that there's um, a ton in this bill for apprenticeship yeah. uh, standards and for job training. And that yes. often yes. Uh, ties yes. back to Good. institutions of higher education uh, as well as uh, technical schools. Uh, you know, the all these tax credits- uh, well, that would go- That would come through the California um, aspect rather than say NOAA or NSF or uh, even NASA, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 So the the way that the tax credits work is there's technically a base credit. You know, let's say I am uh, uh, I'm building a utility scale solar project uh, that's you know a hundred million dollars, uh, and I want to get the investment tax credit, uh, which will uh, you know I, I can qualify either at six percent if I don't comply with apprenticeship standards. So I you know can yeah. basically get a tax credit of of I said 100 million, so six million dollars. Or if I comply with domestic content standards and apprenticeship standards, I get a 30 million dollar tax credit. It goes up by a factor of five if you comply with those. So it really sends a strong message that it's not just, you know, eh, you'll get a few more cents on the dollar if, if you do this. It, it it really changes the game. It increases it five times. And so I doubt that any of these large scale, you know, um, solar or other renewable energy developers, they are all going to invest really strongly in technical education and in apprenticeships and in partnering yeah. with labor unions. And I think we're going to see that 
you know, we're hopeful that that uh, that will really lead to you know pay dividends in terms of developing. Yeah, I the believe next that's a good of, driver. That's an excellent of, driver. Yeah. Of, you know, and, and these jobs are high paying uh, as and well. You know, yeah. uh, especially especially in the wind and solar sector. So yeah, you know, I think curriculum and um, a lot more jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again. That's for sure. That's reassuring. Could find okay. a job. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. I see Don has a question on uh on on water and hemp. Uh yeah, I mean, I, I think that as we look at the, you know, agricultural sector, and I'm admittedly a little bit less familiar with uh, a lot of the provisions in, um, in, in, in this bill on, uh, on, 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 on agriculture, but, you know, I think that it, 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 it puts the incentive in the right place for uh, reducing water use, for increasing the resilience of, of croplands, and, you know, I don't think it 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 incentivizes certain crops over others. Uh, although I think there might be some some push and some payments for perennial crops over annual crops. Uh, I, I think that as we sort of look at the carbon intensity, relative carbon intensity, and carbon storage of of you know the agricultural sector, uh, certainly I think you know shifting uh, you know the resources that we use that go into the products that we use. Uh, and the you know the feasibility of that will be something that 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 will remain part of the discussion. And you know the one thing that I don't think I mentioned is uh, you know as as my boss says this is you know this bill takes us forty percent of the way there to to lower emissions. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. Um, we have a lot of additional efforts to make both on the implementation side uh, as well as on the. Uh, uh, you know, on, on future legislative action. So I think that, you know, we, we, um, you know, we're not, we're not so uh, overconfident uh, uh, and entitled to say that we, this is perfect um, and we nailed it and we're never going to have to, you know, change our approach or refine it or, or, or increase our ambition. So, um, uh, so I think that, you know, we'll, there, there's, there's more to do. So as sort of, as you have these questions, it's, it's really helpful for, for for us all right thank you um bye oliver bye yeah very uh, good and i, I want to be respectful of your time oliver is on the east coast right now so he's up pretty late so um once again we really appreciate you coming on and a lot of good information a lot of great questions from everyone and we appreciate you taking the time to answer them. great no i'm i am i am it was it was a pleasure speaking with you all i I, I apologize for not being able to tie it all into a tight bow, but as I hope I've sort of expressed, there are um, a lot of provisions in this bill, uh, a lot that we're really excited about. Uh, and so I hope that you all will feel free to touch base with me if there are any questions that you think of after this, or if there are any elements of the bill that you, you know, just want to talk through offline and, and and learn a bit more about I can if I don't have the answer uh, luckily as a congressional staffer I uh, one of the coolest parts is we, we have easy access to people who can get us the answers uh, so I'm always happy to be that conduit and help uh, help answer any questions you might have very good appreciate that very much so. okay thank you everyone for attending thanks again Oliver and everyone have a good evening Thank you all.